Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's all stand this morning and begin to worship God in this house this morning. Yeah. 
Everybody just lift their hands for a moment and just thank the Lord for his goodness, for his mercy and his grace. No clapping, just raising your hands and thanking him with a heart of thankfulness for the goodness and mercy that he has given us. Come on, everybody, just lift your voice for a moment. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, O oh Lord, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made in your image. We magnify you, God. We praise you and we bless your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I feel like so many times in our life that we, you may be seated for a moment. I feel like so many times in our life that we fall into a routine of hype and we just clap after a song. Man, thank you, Lord. And we sit down and wait for the next one. But Sister Maria, there's something to be said about a heart of thankfulness. But the ability that when you begin to realize what they're actually singing about in my father's house, there's room for me. I had a little Bible study, or we had a little Bible study after we ate the other night on Thursday night. And one of the scriptures that I read was Jesus was coming from Bethany. And he got to a place walking into Jerusalem where he looked down upon the city. And he said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. He began to look at them. How often I desire to, to hold you as a mama hen does her chicks, but you wouldn't let me. And I thought about that. How many times, Sister Maria, have we walked into this place? Have we woke up on a daily, uh, uh, every day, and we sit up on the side of our bed and we go about our day and the Lord is looking at us and say, How often have I desired just to hold you and carry some of this burden that you're carrying, the anxiety that we hear about on Wednesday nights. How often have I desired to do that for you? But you wouldn't let me. But we could come into this place with a mindset of worship and a mindset of thankfulness. There's something to be said about thankfulness. That when you realize how truly blessed we are of God, every one of us walked into this place today. Every one of us has breath to open our mouth and begin to praise Him. Every single one of us in this place and if I can walk into this place and realize that I was born and created of a living God that has made me for a purpose, and I can begin to open my mouth and say, God, I am blessed of you. I walked into this place today on my own accord. I opened my mouth on my own accord. I raised my hands when there's those in this place that don't have the ability to do it. And I can praise you and fearfully magnify you for all that you've done for me. There's something that's going to begin to happen in this place today. Amen. I am wonderfully made and created of God. And I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning. I ain't here to put a damper on it. I'm just here to let you know that God created each and every one of you for a purpose. And when you realize what that purpose is, then you can walk into this place, Brother Johnny, with a new attitude. I don't come to get stirred, but I came to be changed. 
I come to hear a word, and I came to allow that word to be make me a doer. Amen. I want to be a doer of the word at this place today. So can everybody just give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Thank him for his goodness and his mercy. Praise him because we are fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of the living God. Hallelujah. I thank you, Jesus. I magnify you, Lord. Amen and amen. Now we're going to give you a chance to give of what God has blessed you with in this place today. We have many ways to give. We have GiveLify. We have PayPal available at riverbendpentecostals.com. You can send your cash and checks to be mailed to Riverbend Pentecostals, P.O. Box 477, New Madrid, Missouri, 63869. Amen. And if you're here this morning, you can give your offering in the wooden pans and your tithing in the gold pans. We also have text to give, which is 833-883-9311. Amen. So if we could, everybody stand in the house this morning. We're going to pray this prayer, and we're going to pray it like we mean it. Because God truly has blessed us. He truly has uh, given us things that we need to get through this life. Amen. Amen. He's blessed us. He's kept us. And I want to do all I can do to give back unto him. Pray this prayer with me this morning. Upon the authority of your word, I have given and it shall be given unto me. Pressed down, shaken together and running over. I'm a tither and I give my offerings. And I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. And the curse is broken, and I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and incomes, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished, and royalties received. My whole family saved and serving God in perfect health and abundance walking in divine favor and blessings. I'm blessed going in, and I'm blessed going out. And all that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Come and give with what God has blessed you with this morning. I am guilty. Ashamed of what I've done. What I've become These hands are dirty I dare not lift them up To the Holy
Oh, thank you. He paid the ultimate sacrifice where we could be in here doing this today. Praising and worshiping the God that died for all of our sins. He gave us a name to be healed in. And I'm thankful for him. And I'm just so, so thankful to serve the one true God of this world. The one that brings change and brings healing in this, into this place today. And we're going to go into prayer. And if you have something going on in your life and you need the Lord to bring a change or bring a healing into your life, as you make your way down to the front, we will have people to pray with you. And there's going to be somebody that's going to meet you here. And he's going to have the healing that you need. And he's going to have the things that you desire. You just have to meet him. You have to step out in faith and come down here and grab what you want from him. And if you would, just pray. Pray right now with us. Lord, we're just so thankful for you today. We're thankful for your presence that is in this place, Lord. We're just so thankful that your spirit is here meeting us, interceding for us, Lord. Lord, we just need you to just meet us in this place right now, Lord. I pray for healing to be in this place today, Lord. I pray that your hand is upon everyone that has a need in this place, Lord. Lord, just surround them with your arms, Lord. Keep them in your, in your place, Lord. Lord, we just need you. We love you. We're thankful for you, Lord. You are the ultimate God of our life, Lord. There is no one above you, nor beside you, God. Just work in this world.
tell you that the work God wants to do here, and I'm going to concur with Brother Larry, uh, is not a patty cake work. And I'm not being ugly or diminishing anything you do, but if at the end of a song or at the end of a testimony, if you, that's not worship, that's going through the motions. I agree we should clap. But as I walked up here, I felt exactly what you felt, Brother Larry. We just keep on doing that. But every time we come up against hell, we're going to get beat. I come with a word today. Here's what's in the house. Here's what's in the house. Is... Um, well, here, here's the title of my message. When my function equals God's value. When my actions, when my functioning as the part of the body that I'm designed to be equals God's value. I have become worthy. My value is established by God. My worth is established by me. Now unto him that's able 
to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. And the church said, Amen. Amen. When my function equals God's value, I'm worthy. Your value has been established by God. Your worth is waiting on you. I'm going to prove this to you by the word of God. But I want you to know there's bigger things in you than what you've shown. That song they just sang is one of my favorites. I love it. I listen to it. What was dead now lives again. Spirit of repentance is in this room today. Spirit that's calling us. Um, calling us to become worthy. I'm going to preach a little while and I think it's going to make sense because I see people looking at me like I'll prove it to you I wouldn't get up here and preach it if I didn't believe it this one's been brewing in me for a couple of weeks man longer than that going on a month but it's fitting God I love you with all of my heart I do can't live this life without you can't breathe without you everything I have is because of you Lord you have invested an entire life in me your mercy and your grace have been extended to me countless and numerous times I'm thankful for that and I pray God that that, that calling that's going out over the waves right now that calling I pray God that it's grass and the magnitude of it is grasped in this place today in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen and be seated if you would. Y'all have a seat for a minute. I heard Brother Robert Bear say one time, I said be seated, not sedated. Now unto him that's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. I have to confess to you. I knew this said amen at the conclusion, but these are powerful, often quoted words and they are actually the concluding words of a prayer. Paul prays and writes it to churches, beginning perhaps with Ephesus, but from all appearances, this was a letter that would have had a blank where the addressee was written, and it was kind of a circular. You understand what I mean by that? It was a letter that was written to Ephesus, but was intended to be shared with believers all throughout the region. The concluding thought of this prayer that I shared with you in verses 20 and 21, Brother Brian Kinsey in his book, The Bride's Pearl, a commentary on Ephesians says that this prayer is wrapped in a resounding praise for the immense power of God. The truth is for Holy Ghost filled believers, and I've got to say this, we do not preach, teach, declare, yell, cajole, whisper that you need to be born again of the water and of the spirit so you can join a club. We believe we have to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost in order to overcome this flesh and be saved. 
We need Jesus working on the inside, showing up on the outside to make a change in our life. For Holy Ghost-filled believers, which these folks were, Acts the 19th chapters when the gospel was introduced to believers at Ephesus and you read in, in Ephesians chapter number 1, which after they believed, they received or were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. These are Holy Ghost-filled believers. And for Holy Ghost-filled believers, please hear me as I preach to you this morning, the power that you're looking for does not reside in heaven but within you. The power you need to overcome does not have to be prayed down. It has to be stirred up. It's not a passive presence. Once you're filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, he doesn't put a cork on it as it were and allow just a passive presence. But there is within you a powerful working there is within you uh, an operation of working uh, that's not much different than the creation of the world. There is within you a powerful presence that is the same as moved upon the waters in creation. And he is able to do exceeding. If my mannerisms in preaching are different today, that's on purpose. Because I'm trying to change. Because I get going so fast sometimes, I get to leaving folks in my dust. So until you fill your tank up and get in shape to come go with me, I'm going to slow down. He is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that's working in us. So in effect, if the Holy Ghost is not working in you, he's not going to be working around you either. The measurement, or the measuring stick of the operation of God through you is indicative of the operation of God in you. What's he doing in you will show up through you. And this power will continue to work in us. Remember, I taught you, it says worketh, E-T-H, means a continual working. And this power will continue working in us as it has countless men and women throughout all ages. I feel a little Holy Ghost moving right now. Throughout all ages, world without end, which is indicative of a continual working of an adding to each subsequent generation of believers uh, to those uh, who have gone on before. Let me tell you something. We're not rotating through the universe uh, by ourselves, uh, but we are being built uh, upon the foundation of the apostles uh, and the prophets. Uh, and the operation of the Holy Ghost uh, is what bonds us together and allows us to testify of the same working of the Spirit in our past uh, and declares it into our future. The picture of the Holy Ghost in you, and please forgive me if I have insinuated this in any way, shape, form, or fashion, but the, the picture of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Ghost working, the power of the Holy Ghost working in you is not just maintenance and it's not just cleaning up your mess and it's not just helping you to feel better. It is not a reactive spirit but it is a proactive spirit. It is something that wants to give birth to something in you or perhaps give birth to a revival in each individual of the awareness that the spirit of God is in us so that the world can see him. And it is in us. Please hear me right now as I say this. Under the authority of the Holy Ghost. 
If I brag on you and you fail, I don't care. I just wanted to say that. Me bragging on you is not the end all to end all. The power of the Holy Ghost working through you is the end all to end all. And it's only the power of God that is restoring and remaking and washing you and making you clean that is your validation and affirmation. Don't think because I say you're doing good that you really are. You just are to me. And I love you. The picture of the Holy Ghost is not one of simple survival. But this picture of the Holy Ghost is to give birth to in us an awareness that the mission of the Holy Ghost is not maintenance. You understand what I mean by that? The Lord doesn't give you the Holy Ghost to change the light bulbs in your eyes. He does not give you the Holy Ghost just to nudge you a little bit here and nudge you a little bit there. And make sure you be good. He does not give the, you the Holy Ghost because you are incomplete and no good and useless and worthless. And he's going to make up for all your deficiencies. But he gives you the Holy Ghost so that the world in which we live can see Jesus Christ in us. Amen. And in alignment with the scriptures, his plan is to work in us on us and through us into our posterity forever in ways that we have not heretofore imagined. Don't think you know for one second God's plans for your future. Don't you think you know for one second God's plans for the generation that's coming after you. Because the book says, Sister Maria, that he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Here's how I like to say that. What I ask is what I believe he can do. What I think is what I'm scared to even ask him because it's so big. And brother Cody, the Bible says he's going to do greater than that. So if you've got something brewing around in your spirit that you're afraid to ask, just go ahead and ask it because God's got bigger plans than that. What you ask, what you imagine cannot even scratch the surface of, of what God intends to do. Not only in you, but in your posterity, your generations to come. That's why 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18 in the New Living Translation says, that is why we never give up. That is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. Let me tell you something, honey. Let's put all of Olay out of business or some of them other places. They ain't getting rid of your wrinkles. They ain't getting rid of your marks. They ain't. You're made to die. Your body is on the way down. I don't want to encourage you no more than that, but I want to let you know that nothing physically in this world can hinder the growth, renewing, and refreshing of the Holy Ghost in you. Oh, Lord, help me. If you give the same amount of attention to your spirit as you do in the tanning bed every week, this church would experience an incredible revival. The same amount you do putting on your face. Oh, God, have mercy. Of trying to hold back the aging. And the Bible says uh, our outer man is dying day by day. <laughs> but our inward man. That's what I've got to start getting my focus on. <laughs> Sister Maria, I ain't going to get out of here alive. <laughs> I'm not going to make it out of here alive. Uh, except in the spirit. Uh, this body's going to the grave. <laughs> but I better start putting some focus on the inward man. <laughs> I better start caring for the one that's going to live forever. Excuse me, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I promised you I wasn't going to get carried away and I went and did it anyway. Our bodies are dying, but we ain't giving up. Because our spirits are being renewed every day. Somebody re hear the word of the Lord right now. Hear the word of the Lord. For our present troubles are small 
and won't last very long. Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. Our present distress ain't that big a deal. Yeah, it came back on me, but that's all right. Our present troubles are small and they won't last very long. Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. Y'all think this ain't the Holy Ghost? I'm telling you, this is the word of God for this church right now. So we don't look at the trouble we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. Why? Because that's where he's operating. Now unto him that's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Brother Jerry, that's where he's operating. He's operating in the area that I can't even imagine. He's operating in the area that I can't even fathom. For the things we see now will soon be gone. But the things we cannot see will last forever. Yes. Ephesians 4 and 1 says, So I therefore, so since I've got the truth established that it's the Holy Ghost that's going to work in you and through you forever. The power of the Holy Ghost with this truth established that the that the Spirit of God is going to is going to continue. Oh, I feel Holy Ghost moving right now. The Spirit of God is going to continually work in you, world without end, through all ages. Amen. We need to get one thing settled before I start working on me. I have to get the revelation of Him. And I taught us Wednesday night, and I'm going to reiterate it again. When I automatically, automatically, when I begin to think on a carnal level, I'm thinking limited. But when I begin to think on a spiritual level, I automatically move into the realm of the infinite. That's why I taught you. I did it this week. I slacked off for a few ways. I've been praying. I prayed through the tabernacle a little bit, and I prayed another prayer, but then I began to pray the Lord's Prayer this week because you know why, Brother Austin? I needed that part that said, Our Father who art in heaven. Because if you remember, I taught you that. I preached that that is to lift our focus from the temporal to the eternal, from the fleshly to the spiritual. And when I hang around in the flesh and I hang around in the temporal, I get depressed and I get discouraged. But when I lift my head, when I lift my head from the temporal to the spiritual, all of a sudden things start making sense. And all of a sudden I start feeling hopeful. And all of a sudden it becomes like it really is. Unlimited. Please be seated. So we got to establish who he is. Now, we're going to go to work on me and thee. He said, I therefore, therefore means with this truth established, since you know that about the Holy Ghost, Paul, the prisoner of the Lord, he's in jail, but he's not in jail because the enemy said he could be in jail. He's in jail because the Lord said you need to be in jail. Sister Sheila, I can't wait till I get that mindset. I'm on my way. He said, I'm locked up, but it ain't because the enemy decided to lock me up. I'm locked up because the Lord needed me here. Oh, help us, Holy Ghost. You talk about it, having lost his filter of self-preservation. And he said, I beseech you, 
That's just a strong form of ask. That is an exhortation. That is calling you to an awareness. That's not saying, hey, would you do me a favor? That is saying, I'd like for you to do this because your life depends on it. I beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. So we're going to translate or be transformed or be transitioned, excuse me, from the overwhelming promise of the continual working of the Holy Ghost in us and our children and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren. Are y'all catching that? I, I'm not, Brother, Brother Terrence, man, you, you, you declared it to us that day and you declared it to your friend, but I never forgot it. I'm not here because I want to be all right. I'm here because I want generations of my family to be all right. So we're going to transition from the overwhelming promise of the continual working of the Spirit of God within us to now we're going to focus on the walk of the believer. Now, he says walk worthy. According to definition, that means conduct your life in accord with the value of the calling God has placed upon you. Helps word study says it like this. Having worth that matches actual value. God has put a value on what he's called us to do. And when we function accordingly, we walk worthy. Am I making sense? Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. Brother Johnny, when God made me, he put a value on my life. And when I walk according to his will, I become worth his value. Value, God's estimation of my calling. Worthy is me embracing that estimation and fulfilling that calling at its fullest capacity as God intended. So my value is established by God. My worth is established by me. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Based upon how I live my life. Maybe I need to give you a microphone. Used to be Brother Billy would say, hello. <laughs> but I need you to start saying, uh-oh. There you go. Because right then I just messed everybody up. Because we have in our mind that first part, now unto him that's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think. And we'll woo! And we'll shout and we'll talk in tongues about that. But then he gets over to the next part. He said, well, since I'm solid. Since I'm solid in who I am. And we've established what I do. How about let's go to working on who you are and establishing you in what you do. For those who have graduated or in the process of graduating elements class, may I introduce you to alignment. That's what I'm talking about. Hear me. Embracing the estimation of my value that God has determined and fulfilling it at its fullest capacity wow. determines my worth. Yes. 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 Oh, it's been working for a while in me now. I've often wondered when it refers to communion. You remember it says people that drink the blood and eat the body unworthily? That's not even a reflection on God. That's a reflection on me. The early apostolic church is in revival, the book of Acts. Miracles, signs, and wonders are being wrought by and through these early believers by faith of the operation of the Holy Ghost in them. It was a ragtag, motley crew band of believers the 12 disciples of Jesus, people that have come to Jerusalem for the Passover, people who have never left, 
It's, it's fishermen and tax collectors and so on and so forth, people from all walks of life. Miracle signs and wonders are being wrought by them and through them by faith in the operation of the Holy Ghost in them. Now unto him that's able to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think according to the power that worketh in you. So the Holy Ghost is working in them. And multitudes of believers are being added to the church. The sick are being laid in the street. Now, I want you to picture this. The Bible doesn't say their shadow healed them. It just says they laid them in the street so it would overshadow them. Can you picture, Brother Larry, Christmas time, Christmas shopping at Walmart, but everybody's there because of Holy Ghost-filled believers. That's how it was then. They came. The Bible says they brought their sick from towns all around Jerusalem. I wish somebody would get a picture of this right now. When my function equals his value, there are no limits to what the Holy Ghost can do. They laid the sick in the street so the shadow of the apostles might overshadow them. Multitudes of sick folks and those afflicted by unclean spirits are being brought from the surrounding cities. And in Acts chapter 5, it says, every one of them was healed. And the high priest and the Sadducees were filled with anger and jealousy. And rather than rejoice, they took the disciples captive. I'm going to preach a minute right now. I know, I'm, I know this is a little different, but I'm about to minister to you. They locked them in jail and they shut the door. They set guards over them. And the Bible says in the nighttime, I want somebody to hear this preacher as I tell you right now. Stop cursing the night and longing for the day and just get ready for the angels to come to you in the nighttime. Oh, I ain't done. I'm fixing to preach. And the angel came in the nighttime. You know why the Lord's operating in the nighttime? The enemy can't see either. And he came in the nighttime. It's in the Bible. You can read it. And he turned the apostles loose. Oh, Brother Larry, hear this right now. You men hear this word. And he turned the apostles loose and said, go back to the temple and go back to teaching the people. Right where they just got picked up at. The Holy Ghost said, you do what I called you to do. And you let me take care of the rest. You keep on doing what I called you to do. Don't get distracted trying to do something that's not your job. I didn't call you to be a jailbreaker called you to preach the gospel. Yes. Said you go right back where you were and teach the people. Yes. Get ready, baby. I'm not going to be much longer and I might quit at any time. <laughs> but then again, be prepared because I might keep going. <laughs> the Bible said when the day broke, they went back to the temple and began to teach the people the gospel of Jesus Christ. Sister Sheila, the, the, the powers that be came together. And they said, remember, they don't know what the angel did in the nighttime. How beautiful is it when the devil and his imps are sitting around plotting what to do with you and the Lord's done turns you loose. He ain't privy to everything God is doing. That's why I said let it happen in the nighttime. And the priest and their company 
sent the soldiers to the prison to get the disciples. And the soldiers came back and said, the doors are locked, the guards are in place, but the preachers ain't nowhere to be found. That's what it says. And then they said, I don't have this in my notes, but I like it. Then the priests, they turned to one another and said, we better do something. Because there ain't no telling where this is going to grow to. Because they knew they were messing with something above their pay grade. Because if y'all, do y'all remember this? We serve a God that operates in the above. Huh? Huh? Here comes somebody about that time busting through the door. And they said, remember them preachers you locked up yesterday? Yeah. They're down there preaching again. <laughs> True story. It's in the book. They're down there teaching people about Jesus again. So they sent a bunch of soldiers to get them. They didn't have no fight. They didn't have no problem. And they set them down before their court. And they said, didn't we tell you, quit teaching in the name of Jesus Christ. And instead of quitting, this is in the book. I'm, I'm not, this is not preacher speak. This is the word. I love it. And they said, instead of stopping preaching in the name of Jesus, you done filled the whole cotton picking city with your doctrine. You did just the opposite of what we told you to do. And the apostles and Peter, here we go, Brother Kevin, this ain't to you. <laughs> Peter and the apostles simply responded by saying, we got to obey God rather than man. Right. This is what he said. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you slew and hanged him on a tree. Him hath God exalted to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses of these things. I like it. I like it. I like it. Guess what he says next? I sure should have gave you these scriptures so they could see them. But he said, we are witnesses of these things. And so is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will give to them that obey him. Listen, we are witnesses of these things. And so is the Holy Ghost. We are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Ghost. Yeah. What does that mean? Line it. Yeah. Come on, come on now. Listen to me. You got to stay with me. Look at here. Look at here, look at here, look at here, look at here. They took counsel. When he said he gives the Holy Ghost to them that obey him, they just said, forget it. No more jail. We're killing you. Wisdom prevails in the face of one Gamaliel, and they decide not to kill him. But instead, they beat him. Following the law would have been 39 stripes, just like Jesus. And they once again commanded that they stop speaking in the name of Jesus. Verse 41. Here's where I'm going to preach to you. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing. Is there anybody in the house right now that you be honest? I want you, let's all practice this. Everybody in the house, raise your hand. You're not admitting to nothing. You're not volunteering for nothing. I just want to see if you can raise your hand. Okay, put it down. Now you have no excuse. And if you don't raise your hand and it's the truth, you're lying. You got to get up early to get past old G money. How many of you are going through something? Or your family's going through something? Or you feel like the church is in revival but I'm struggling. If I could just, put your hands down. If I could just get over this. If I could just get through this. 
How many of you would like to be out of your mess? Praise God. They were scared of lying in church. Look at this, Sister Maria. This is powerful. This is so powerful. And they departed from the presence of the council rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Man. Looked it up. Helps Word Study says they had been counted worthy. Strong's says weighing as much as Weighing that reflects actual, precise worth. The balance is even. So I would ask you this question. Who told them they were worthy? Our value is determined by God. Our worthiness is determined by us. And revealed in our actions. That's good. You want to get out of your mess, and I declare to you today, hold on a minute. The early apostolic church worshiped, rejoicing that they were counted worthy because they had arrived at a place where the opposition of hell, rabid, loud, angry, passionate, Opposition of hell no longer sounded like accusations, lies, and pity. But now when hell attacked them, instead of hearing accusations, it sounds like this. You are a worthy adversary. You are finally causing hell enough trouble that they got to try to do something about it. Well, I feel the Holy Ghost moving in this house right now. I feel the Spirit moving in this house right now. I behave myself as if I'm worthy. But the way I know I'm worthy is when the enemy tells me I'm worthy. When the enemy decides uh, I need to cause some problems. Uh, I need to get in their way. I need to mess them up. They didn't know they were worthy until they're bebopping away from the priest's house. Bloody backs limping, bruised, and beaten. But something clicked in, Sister Maria, because they were in perfect alignment. And they realized the enemy knows I'm worthy. The enemy knows I have finally reached the place for which I am created. And it's not to get out of my little struggle. It's not to get out of my little mess. But it's to cause hell as many problems as I possibly can. It's reaching down into the gutter. And grabbing a hold of people that hell thought was safe. It's grabbing a hold of people that hell thought belonged to them. And declaring the blood of Jesus. And the name of Jesus. And the power of the Holy Ghost. The early church, stand with me if you're able. They had positioned themselves and behaved in such a manner that their enemy declared their worth. You see, Brother Larry, it's not about making them clap more. But let me tell you what it is. Somebody out here amongst all of y'all who you came to church spiritually with your eyes swelled shut, big old pump knots all over your head. You came in spiritually on crutches and limping and you're all bound up and you're all doctored up and, and you've just been trying to make it through. 
Hit one note on that piano, baby, just any one. And as soon as you hear it, you say, thank you, Jesus. And the devil says, no, 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 no. That ain't supposed to be happening. Look at them. Look at them. Look what they're going through. Look what they're struggling with. Look at them. I beat them down. I bruised them. They've been bleeding. They've been messed up. They've been tore up. They've been, they've been all jacked up, Brother Derek. But she hit a note on the piano, and they said, Ooh, thank you, Jesus. You know what the devil says right then? Hmm. Maybe I underestimated. Yeah. Because the devil, hear me, Sister Maria, the devil ain't underestimating him. He's not underestimating him. But the devil's battleground is in your life. And I just showed up today to declare I'm worthy. I ain't got it all together, and I ain't got it all figured out yet, but I'm on, woo, I'm on my way. I'm on my way because I'm here, because I'm in the presence of the Lord, because I'm doing what he said. I know I'm messing with our theology today, but that's the truth, gentlemen. Paul said, I beseech you to walk worthy. You walk worthy. I put the spirit in you so you could. So here's what we're going to do today. You came here today bringing sin, failure, fake, Lies, living behind a mask. You want everybody to think that you've shared all your struggles and all your weaknesses, but you're holding on to the biggest one? What everybody can say right now is, oh, man, he ain't talking to me. Oh, I'm talking to you. I don't care if you came in here in the last speck of sin in your life is about that big. Or if you came in here pulling a semi-truck behind you. The solution begins at the same place. He thought I was worth saving. So he came and changed my life. He thought I was worth keeping. So you cleaned me up. So he cleaned up me up. You thought I was to die Stay for. right there. He thought I was worth dying for. Yes. That's the value he put on me. It was his life. It was his life. He thought I was worth saving. You thought I was worth saving So you came and changed my life You thought I was worth keeping Come on, you need to be here You need to be here So you clean me up inside You thought I was to die for So you sacrificed your life So I could be
to sing. And then we're going to baptize Ashley. Jesus name. She's already received the gift of the Holy Ghost last week. She came and asked me to be baptized. But while she and Sister Miss Jane said, who are you going to have go back with Ashley? And I said, well, I don't know. I said, well, you go. She said, I never went before. I said, yeah, I said, I said, there ain't nothing scary back there. <laughs> but, I got you to yeah. This song's heavy on me. You can be seated if you want to. You might not be for long. It, 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 
Sister Kim used to sing it. The, the entire praise team used to sing it. I don't even know all the words to it. So they're going to have to help pick me up. But it says, so many times I've questioned certain circumstances and things I could not understand. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I want to get in the right key. Maybe I don't ever get in the wrong key. So many times I've questioned. So many times I've questioned. Certain circumstances. Certain circumstances. And things. And things I did, I did not, not understand. understand. And many times. And no many more times. In trials. trials weakness. Weakness burns my vision. And my frustration is so out It's then I'm reminded. It's then I am reminded. I've never been forsaken. Never had to stand. Never had to stand. Not even one test. So as I look at all the things, the Spirit, the Spirit.
I don't know about y'all, but that's a great feeling. That is a great feeling to see someone saved. There is no other name amongst men which we should be saved by. It's the name of Jesus. I love it. Thankful for it. I'm glad to see it. the Lord working in everything that he's doing. We're going to go into the bulletin. Uh, we got men's prayer meeting tomorrow evening at 6.30. All men invited. If you're a man, come. We'd love to have you. There's always a great move of the Holy Ghost. It's a great time. I, I, a lot of the men that, we, that are in this church, we are, we are connected. We're unified together. We have a great relationship together, and I'm thankful Amen. to be a part of that. Uh, church cleaning this week is the Bobo family. Uh, Tuesday, December the 13th, 6 p.m., ladies' night. Um, Sign-up sheet is in the back. December the 19th at 6.30 p.m. is the ladies' Christmas banquet at uh, Hickory Log. If you're going, you must sign up by the 16th this Friday. Me and Brother Austin, we about to make us a men's banquet or something going on. <laughs> You women doing a whole lot of stuff. Hey, I told him, I said, even if it's just me and you going, it'd be all right. Hey. <laughs> uh, we got Christmas Day. We will have church at 11 a.m. There will be no elements class, River Bend Kids or River Bend Ignited. Uh, renewal Marriage Retreat in Branson. Uh, it's February the 9th through the 11th of next year you must register at uh evenbright.com brother Jane, uh, jerry damesworth will be preaching uh for us sunday january the 8th where that's going to be a dynamite service sister stacy will be taking the senior citizen ladies uh to look at christmas lights again this year date and time to be announced um, <clears throat> if you or someone you know would like to receive the church text, please let Sister Amanda know, and we will send prayer requests and reminders and cancellation and etc. to you. And at this time, we will go ahead and do the birthdays and the anniversaries. We got any birthdays or anniversaries in the house? All right. <clears throat> Oh, look at old brother Josh. Oh, nice, bro. Getting old, ain't you? <laughs> All right. The birthdays will stand. We're saying happy birthday to you. A happy birthday to you. A happy birthday. We will all stand in the house today, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Brother Richard, will you end us in prayer today? Brother. You're dismissed.